Hey, my name's Drew. I'm a running coach and an amateur runner here in Flagstaff, Arizona. I'm gonna bring you some recommendations on how to find the right running shoe for you and what my shoe rotation looks like. Let's go. The first type of shoe I wanna talk about is your easy day or trainer shoe. So these easy trainers, they're probably gonna be something like this, Saucony Endorphin Shift 3. Uh, things to consider when buying an easy day or trainer shoe is going to be the amount of stack height or, um, or cushion that you're gonna have under your foot. Depending on the type of running surface you're, uh, you're running on daily, you're really gonna to wanna to figure out how much foam you want between you and the road. Second thing to consider is probably gonna be durability. So the durability of the base of your shoe, does it feel like it can withstand 200, 300, 400, sometimes upwards of 500 miles? Um, personally, my shoes usually tax out, depending on the brand, around 400, 350 to 400 miles, but I've had shoes go well above that. It all depends on the style of running, how much you weigh, um, if you're a midfoot striker or a heel striker uh, or a forefoot striker, and the design of the shoe. So um, pick something that's gonna last a long time and try and find something that works for you and then just buy several pairs of it. Um, I have a few different pairs of the same shoes that I run in every day. I have two pairs of these, they're in different colors so I can identify them. And when you give the shoe a little bit time to breathe uh, after a run, you allow that foam when it, uh, when that foam squishes down on your run repeatedly, when you let it sit for about 24 to 48 hours, it allows that foam just open back up and breathe. It, whether or not it's a mental thing, uh, I really think it helps uh, increase the durability of the shoe and the life of the shoe. So that's your easy day shoe. Next, I'd move on to a workout shoe. My favorite workout uh, trainer workout shoe is gonna be this New Balance Rebel V3. Uh, really awesome shoe, super pliable and uh, kind of just lets your foot do a lot of work, which I love. These shoes, when I do work out, I'll take these from threshold pace down to anything like your 5K pace or 3K pace, or even some strides, which is faster than that. They're super light, so lightness and uh, lightness. Weight of the shoe is uh, really important when you're thinking about a workout shoe. You want it to be light enough where you can get really good turnover, but you also want enough cushion, which I love about this thing. Super soft cushion. Um, it's got a little bit of cushion in the heel that's, I mean, it's great. And it's got these little pads on them that are pretty durable. They, they're not very soft, they're pretty hard, but they layer on top of this super, super soft foam. So for me, the, the durability of these has been pretty good. It's not amazing. It's not like an everyday running shoe, but I only use it on my workout reps. So I'll do my warm up and my cool down in an easy, um, kind of easy everyday trainer like this, Saucony. And then I'll swap over to a lighter shoe that uh, might have a little bit less of a lifespan, but I extend that lifespan over uh, a longer duration because I only use it, you know, maybe 10 to 15 miles a week total. If you're going for a plated shoe, another example of a plated kind of like up-tempo shoe would be these New Balance Super Comp trainers. I'm not a huge fan of using uh, carbon plated trainers or even a carbon plated ratio in my workouts. Usually I'll save that for like a bigger session or something that's pre-race kind of prepping my body and uh, getting ready for it. It also can minim minimize the amount of recovery you need. But if you overuse shoes with plates, you're gonna increase your, uh, increase your risk of injury in some of those areas that might be weaker. Another thing to consider when you're looking at different types of workout shoes is what types of workouts are you gonna be doing in them? So. Like I mentioned, this, what is it called? 
this New Balance Rebel V3. This is really good through a lot of different paces, but if I'm just doing threshold work and I'm doing large volume of threshold work, I might go for something with a little bit of bigger stack height, um, give you know more space between my foot and the ground, a um, little bit more shock absorption, because I wouldn't necessarily need that uh, weight savings that a smaller stack height shoe might bring. So this is really great for a lot of faster paces. I love it kind of throughout the whole range, but I'm kind of considering some, uh, some shoes with a larger stack height, more cushion uh, for those larger volume sessions or even like a long run. These have been pretty good on long runs for that exact reason, because they do have a ton of like really soft foam, especially in the back and the midfoot that helps just take a little bit of stress off your, uh, off your legs on those longer runs. When we're thinking about race shoes, I think the main factor in a race shoe is going to be what distance are you racing, uh, for races that are relatively short. Oh, Hey, copper. See if copper wants to say hi. Come here, come here. Good boy, good boy. When you're considering a race shoe, the, probably the most important thing is going to be what distance are you going to be racing? For me, something like a Vaporfly, I probably wouldn't race anything more than like a 10K in these personally, just because for anything like 10K and longer, I like to have a little bit more stack height. The Vaporfly doesn't have a ton, but I know People race marathons in these, uh, half marathons, and they feel great. For me personally, that doesn't usually work out well. So depending on the length of race, Vaporfly might be a good option for something that is uh, short and very fast. Very firm plate in there, um, relatively soft foam, but tons of propulsion forward. Uh, awesome shoe. For me, anything from 10K to marathon, I would probably choose this Saucony Endorphin Elite. I probably am gonna buy the new Alpha Flies because I love the Alpha Fly Ones. Uh, the Alpha Fly Ones, my, by far my favorite shoe of all time, especially for marathon and distance and like those super hard long runs. Just like tons of bounce and I think that bounce and energy return is completely unmatched with any other shoe I've tried. Uh, the, the weight of a shoe, if you're going to race in it, is probably gonna be a huge factor. If you buy a shoe that has a little bit of a higher weight, it better have a ton of energy return, like the Alpha Fly. And race shoes can definitely, uh, race shoes definitely need to be tailored to your running style. So if you're a heel striker, a shoe that is really primed for someone who's a, a midfoot to toe striker, like the Vapor Flies, I think those work really well for people who have a more traditional, like forefoot uh, to midfoot strike. Something like the Saucony's. These have way more of a natural roll through that midfoot and kind of from the heel into the midfoot and the toe. So these might be a really good option if you are more of a, a midfoot striker like myself or a, have a little bit of that heel strike going on. So for race shoes, uh, weight, running mechanics, and uh, general price range is probably going to be a huge factor. So for most people, you can't go out and buy a $300 shoe. Uh, on a whim every few months. So I wouldn't run a, a ton of hard efforts in them during training. I like to keep them for race day, save that little amount of energy return that they provide that's a little bit more than your regular trainer. Uh, then you have your trail shoe. I run trails a ton. Uh, right now, this Nike Zagama is my go-to tr uh, trail shoe. It's almost like my everyday trainer as well because most days I am running on the trails, especially in the summer. Uh, I'll run every day on the trail if I'm not doing a workout. So um, things to consider for trail shoes is going to be your tread, your stack height, and the stability of the shoe. So what do those trails look like that you're running on? Are they sandy? Are they gravel? Are they mud? How thick of tread do you need? Do you need these huge rubber spikes in your shoes? Or do you need something that's a little bit softer and more mild uh, just for that extra grip on your gravel trails? So those are all super important for me. I run on really sandy trails and very rocky, so I need a good amount of grip. 
but I also want something light where I can pick up the pace on the flats um, and get a ton of that zone two just um, everyday mileage. The stack height on these is really awesome. I love having a good amount of stack height on pretty much all of my shoes and uh, some soft cushion to, to save my legs and, and stack up the miles. And generally across all shoes, you, you probably want a shoe that's going to like hug your foot, keep it snug, but you don't want a fit that's going to be too tight or too loose. Both of those things can cause just tons of chafing and, and uh, uh, chafing and blistering problems. So try a shoe. Once you find it, like I said, buy two versions of the same shoe and just use and abuse them. I love finding a shoe that fits me well, sticking to it and not deviating from something. So as an example, I mean, the shoes that I'm running in right now, two pairs of each. So my daily trainers, I've got a white pair and a red pair of the Saucony Endorphin Shifts. And I just picked up another pair of the Zagamas. So for trail, I've got a used pair right now and then uh, figured out I liked them, so I bought another pair. Once you find something you like, stick to it. Don't deviate from the plan. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. All right, so that's a wrap up of everything I'm running in right now and the thought process that goes into purchasing new running shoes for me or purchasing the same old sh that I enjoy running in. If you have any issues with purchasing a running shoe, you don't know where to start, maybe you need a recommendation, drop a comment below, let me know, I'll respond and uh, hopefully give you a decent recommendation. All right, so that's a wrap on my shoe rotation and how to pick a running shoe. If you like this video, drop a comment below, subscribe, like it, see ya.